People who grew up with strict parents, what was their most unreasonable rule? I was called at a friend's house at 11pm at night because I left two t-shirts slung over the chair in my room versus hanging them in my closet. I had to go back to my house and then I was grounded for a week. Upon getting home, my mother had gone through my entire room and tossed every item out of my dresser. She claimed they were messily put in the dresser. Fun stuff. My stepmom did this to me. Anytime my closet was a little messy or my clothes weren't folded the way she liked she would dump everything onto the floor and into the middle of my room. I have ADHD and coming home from school seeing that gave me the worst anxiety. It didn't do anything but make me better at hiding my messes and make me incredibly resentful toward her. My mom was very strict about the ratings of movies and video games. One year for Christmas a relative gave me a copy of Star Wars. Shadows of the Empire for the Nintendo 64. It was a T-14 rated game and I wouldn't be turning 13 for another 4 weeks. My mom had my dad drive me to Toys R Us to return the game. We walked into the store and over to the games and he had me pick out an E for everyone rated game. We proceeded to check out and as we went to the car he handed me not only the new game but the game we were supposed to have returned to buy it as well and told me not to let her catch me playing it. That guy deserves a high five. Not my parents but I had a friend who got it pretty bad. If you want to play for one hour, you have to also practice piano for one hour. These and other such rules were posted on his bedroom door. I had a friend who wasn't allowed to say the word stupid and tried to report me to the teacher when I said it. A teacher yelled at me and then told me it was okay in private and not to say it around that one kid. Nice guy, though, just had a helicopter mom. My kids are allowed to say stupid but we always taught them that it was never okay using it referring to a person. My oldest is 10 and when my youngest daughter heard her call something stupid she ran to tell on her older sister. My wife and I cracked up laughing when the little one couldn't understand why she hadn't gotten her sister in trouble. My dad didn't believe in periods. And when I cried that I needed feminine products gave me food stamps to buy them. I was humiliated. My parent were pretty slack on everything except one thing. No video games console ever. And no online games on the computer because that's how you get virus and make the computer run slow. So I was playing my morp when they were sleeping. In a hidden file. In a file. In another file. In another file and I was changing the appearance of every file icon. And this is how you reverse your child's sleep schedule. My mom's curfew was 7pm and her brother's was 12am. Her brother was about 2 years younger than her and my granddaddy's logic was that girls get themselves into more trouble than boys. My poor mother only ever attended church functions for fun until she graduated from high school. My stepmom decided that I was using too much shampoo. She would get a little medicine cup before my shower and pour the designated amount into it. It wasn't ever enough because I had hair down to my butt. I also wasn't allowed to use conditioner. Screw her. I also wasn't allowed to use conditioner. I got a paper route when I was 12 years old. The very first thing I bought with my earnings was a giant bottle of conditioner. I wasn't allowed to cross any streets until middle school. Thus, my best friends were the ones who lived on the same block as me. When I was in 5th grade I wrote some stuff in my diary about masturbating. And like a month later, my mom went through all my stuff. She would randomly go in my room, tear it apart, I'd always get in trouble for something, and then I'd have to clean up the mess and be grounded for whatever amount she felt like that day. So anyway, she found that diary entry. She picks me up from school and won't talk to me. I get home, my door was removed from my room, that diary entry was taped on the wall, and I was threatened with a belt if I didn't answer all her invasive questions. Fricked up. Way to give a kid a complex about their sexuality. Mom hits me with kitchen utensils and yells that I am not allowed to put my hands up to defend myself from her strikes. I was am not allowed to do the following. Use the washing machine. Wash the dishes. Pull the weeds. Vacuum outside of my room. I must ask to use the vacuum. I can't cook a meal. I can't have the remote. 
I get instructed on how to use the microwave that I've been using for years and if I ask where we are going I get told out and I have to dress in jeans, a shirt and running shoes no matter how hot because he doesn't like shorts, and no jacket no matter how cold. We could not listen to music with guitars in it. I will never forget the day my brother was listening to Sabbath Bloody Sabbath and my father took the radio and threw it through the window. Spent my childhood listening to Richard Marx and Michael Bolton. Thanks dad. For every minute I was late coming in from curfew. I got grounded a week. I once spent 10 weeks grounded due to a sobriety checkpoint. Whoa. For me it was every minute late as a minute earlier the next day. Mine is logical. Yours is insane. We couldn't go sledding during the winter. Or any other season. Obviously. Because my mom was a neat freak and didn't want snow slogged into the garage. So. No snow playing of any kind. Really. Never built a snowman. Did go sledding when I was an adult. It's pretty great. All of our clothes in our closet had to be arranged by color. Descending in order by shade. So. For example, midnight blow at one end of the blue section, and tahil blow at the other. There was a system in place for colors, too. So if the yellows were by the purples, for example, there'd be heck to pay. No shoes on in the house under any circumstances. Was super uncomfortable when my brother's friend, who had prosthetic legs and always had shoes on, came over and didn't take his shoes off. Mum got really mad and confronted him. No legus or puzzles allowed, as they make messes and look like disorder. I freaking love puzzles as an adult. One of my favorite hobbies. 30 minutes of internet time a day and 99% of the time. That was supervised, as in mom looking over my shoulder and commenting on conversations. We had webv, rip, and when they weren't home, they would literally lock the keyboard in a toolbox. My sis and I could never have friends stay over because the house is a mess. No amount of cleaning satisfied mom, because the real reason was she wanted to be able to fight with my dad at will. I had to write essays on TV shows that I wanted to watch, in order to have them unblocked by the parental controls. I remember writing a riveting piece on the educational and cultural benefit of Disney's That's So Raven. Also, I wasn't allowed to watch PG-13 movies, even after turning 13. Wasn't allowed to rest my head on my hand with my elbow on any table while there was also food on that table. If my parents found out I was going too fast in my car, small town, so other parents would snitch on me pretty regularly for going 10 over, I had to pay my parents speeding tickets. Also, they would make me pay for the whole family's phone bill if I texted a boy. By the time I moved out at 17, I had given them well over a grand in punishment money earned at the Sonic drive-in. I was not allowed to talk to boys. One Christmas Eve day, I was doing last minute shopping in the downtown of our little town. I ran into two male friends from my German class and we talked for several minutes and wished each other a Merry Christmas. Oh I was 15 at the time. My older sister drove by and saw me, told my parents I was hanging out with boys. When I walked in the house both my parents were waiting and the yelling began. Some Christmas Eve. Snee yike. I was from a large family and discipline was very strict. If myself or one of my siblings broke one of the major rules, my parents would hold a truth session. All the children would be brought to my dad's study where the guilty party would be given an opportunity to confess. If nobody came forward, we would be hit in turn in order of ascending age. The eldest four were hit with a sewer rod while, in deference to their age, the youngest ones would get a whack of a bamboo stick. A sewer rod is basically a 4 foot long flexible rubber rod, around an inch thick and with a metal cap. It would leave the most remarkable welts. Horrendous things really. Anyway, this would continue until someone admitted their guilt. At that point they would receive the blows that everyone else had received to that point. So that was awful. I fully acknowledge that. I'm under no illusions. However, that wasn't the actual unreasonableness. No, the unreasonable part was that the person who caused the truth session didn't always receive the accrued punishment owed for having their siblings beaten. Sometimes they could just be let go making their siblings hate them for causing pain to them. There'd be no explanation. The study door would be opened and we'd all be told to leave. That meant you could be rewarded for holding out and avoiding the punishment you'd definitely get if you admitted it at the beginning. My parents now tell fun stories about how when I was a child and I'd done something wrong, 
I'd always begin with, let me tell you my story. Haha they chortle at my childish phrasing while I recall the terror that such an approach was meant to stave off. Have a friend who isn't allowed to go out if he's already had too much fun this weekend. That's the only reason, they think he'll become corrupted if he has too much fun and that he won't know how to work. He's in college. Females of the family must cook and clean on holidays while males watch TV. Must bus males plates every night. No visiting friends houses no friends over at our house all the way through high school. Hair cannot be cut at or above shoulder. 7pm bedtime. Not curfew. Bedtime. Through junior high. Strictly enforced. Needless to say, I rebelled strong and hard. There were a lot but the most ridiculous one to me was they didn't want me volunteering during high school. I was visiting the elderly and they said it was too dangerous to be around strangers like that and the time was taking away from my studies. The most extracurriculars I wanted to do they had a huge problem with but it didn't hit me how absurd it was until it was about senior citizens. The ironic thing is those things look great on college applications. I wasn't allowed to shrug, or say I don't know, if anything tech related went wrong. It was assumed that I broke it on purpose, even if the only reason anyone knew it was broken is because I was trying to fix it. Birthday parties were a no go, Christmas was a no go, any party whatsoever was a no go. My father was very very strict, I wasn't allowed to have alone time with my mother. He beat the crap out of me constantly, but the oddest thing that still bugs me to this day, is that he would burn all my things as punishment. And I get it, seeing my toys and valuables burning sucked, and I probably learned some lessons. But he not only burned toys, he would burn everything. Every year or so for school he would go to Meyer and buy me new school clothes and shoes. He would also burn those, like sometimes days after he bought them. At 8 years old I remember thinking, you now have to buy me more clothes. But that wasn't the point I suppose. He once took me to the palace of Auburn Hills in Detroit to see the Globe Trotters one year and during the night he bought me a Globe Trotters basketball and jersey. We had a fun night. The very next day, I had left something on the floor in my room and his punishment, among other things, was to burn the basketball and jersey he bought for like $150 less than 24 hours earlier. It just never made sense to me. My friends would joke about it all throughout middle and high school. Seriously one of the psychopathic answers on here. Sorry you had to live with that. This blew my mind. I was not allowed to wear makeup or shave until 16. My mom was controlling about food. Everything was kept track of. I had to be in marching band in order to get my permit. I had a job, but even if I worked second shift, which I did, and came home at 11, I would have to clear the plates from the table for the dinner that they ate. If I asked to hang out with a friend in the presence of said friend, the answer was automatically no. I was only allowed to do things if the friend or their parent was paying for it. The straw that broke the camel's back, and ultimately made me move out at 16, was that I had to live like a boarder. Showers cost $5, a load of laundry was $1 for washer, $1 for dryer. Telephone time cost $25 per minute. No trends, or passing fads. Pokemon, banned. Barbies, banned. Beanie Babies, banned. PlayStation Gamma Boys, banned. Anything particularly fashionable, or popular regardless of actual merit was met with derision and we'd be mocked for even suggesting interest. We were achingly frumpy kids with interests and cultural references, or lack thereof, that isolated us from our peers and they wondered why each of us were bullied. Pretty sure the verdict is in on Barbie and PlayStation. They aren't fads. My parents were slack. My best friend's parents were so strict, she would escape to my house for freedom. 12th grade, prom. Her parents allowed her to go to prom but said she wasn't allowed to dance. We all went to prom, had fun dancing, until she saw her parents standing at the back watching. She then moved out for university. After her first year, she came home to work for the summer. She had been on her own for a year and supporting herself and her parents gave her a 9pm curfew. She spent a lot of time at my house that summer. She was married by the next summer and didn't have to deal with it. Individuality was almost a cardinal sin in my parents house. You wear what they like. You eat what they like. You do what they like. You do not under any circumstances act like a human being with hopes, 
dreams, and opinions. My mom was insanely controlling about food. Weird rules were in place like one slice of lunch meat per sandwich. No one but her was allowed to cook. She'd make one giant batch of spaghetti or something and we'd have leftovers for days. So she only had to make dinner twice a week. She did not work or anything. Just didn't like cooking every day. Breakfast was cold cereal and you'd only be allowed a small bowl with just enough milk to moisten it. Occasionally she'd bake something she called corn toasties which was simply cornbread baked in a sheet pan. She'd cut them into squares and fill the freezer with them and we could have one of those for breakfast as an alternative. Once when I was 14 I bought a pack of hot dogs at the store, snuck them home, and lit the grill. I was almost done cooking them when she came out screaming about fire hazards and swatted the plate out of my hand. She had been making spaghetti. What an ungrateful little bastard I was. So then she orders a pizza for the rest of my family, wraps individual servings of spaghetti in freezer paper, and puts them away. She tells me that I will be eating nothing else until it's all gone. Took about 2 months to choke it all down. Went without eating a lot of days. I was also grounded for over a year. But I sure learned a lot about consequences. Oh god. I wasn't allowed to go out. Like ever. If I was gonna hang out with someone it had to be on the weekend planned at least a week ahead. And my parents had to meet their parents and drive me there. They would come get me before the sun went down. Not a rule. But if I got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night or was reading because I couldn't sleep, my mom would come screaming up the stairs why are you up and sometimes hit me. I wasn't allowed to close the door in my room. There's more but that's what I can think of right now. Mostly my mother would just yell about everything. My parents actually removed the door from my room when I was like 16. I got it back when I started sleeping naked. Not my parents. But my high school friend had very strict parents. This was shortly after 9-11 and the anthrax scare. It was Halloween evening and a group of us were supposed to head out and light fireworks around the neighborhood. Well, my friend wasn't allowed to come out that night because his mom was worried about terrorists bombing our city with anthrax. We live in Canada. No TV or arc music. Both were of the devil. I did watch some TV when at a friend's house and I mostly listened to the music I liked but I did miss out on some TV series that my friends talked about. I feel you on all of this. We only had a TV because a friend was moving away and wanted to give away their TV. But it was barely used. And non-gospel music was universally banned. Was forced to drop out of school in the 5th grade because my grandmother believed that most people have no souls and were demon possessed. She said that the world was unsafe to roam freely because Satan was trying to corrupt God's children. This led to a very sheltered life and very silly things like having to pray over every individual item that entered the house. Food, toiletries, dish soap, you name it. I'd get woken up at 2am to be screamed at for 3 plus hours over something God had told her that I did wrong. So yeah, I guess the most unreasonable rule I grew up with was not being allowed to leave the house. Not my parents, but my best friend's parents were insanely strict growing up. When we were pre-teens and sleepovers were all the rage, if we wanted to have one, we literally lived on the same street. It's a two minute walk between our parents' houses. We had to plan it at least a month in advance, if not more. Even then for whatever reason her parents would only agree to them rarely, so really we'd only get to have like 2-3 a year. One time I started getting sick at school on a Friday and we had planned a sleepover, ages ago as usual. For that night, I was feeling absolutely awful but tried my best to stay at school because obviously if I went home sick the sleepover would be called off. Made it to lunch and then the teacher called me over and said I was white as a ghost and burning up and had to go home. My best friend and I were devastated. Sad day. Dad was a narcissist. Biggest rule in the house was not to make any noise around him. If he was home the whole house got quiet and tense. Even my mom used to eat her cereal in the bedroom because she'd get in trouble for chewing crunchy food. Now she's long rid of him and married to a way better guy, but she still apologizes for eating crackers. Once got electronic access taken away because I don't share myself. Jokes on them I'm still a recluse. Can't fix what ain't broken. Reminds me of what my mom said a few years back when she took away my phone. Apparently I wasn't functioning correctly. I did my chores, made dinner, had good grades. No idea what that means. 
to this day. In the 1970s, my extremely conservative Mormon mother would take the masks from out grocery store plastic Halloween costumes, those wretched ones with the thin elastic string to hold them on, and widen the eye holes with scissors as much as she could without destroying the mask. When we asked why this was necessary, she informed us that in our church, we don't like masks because it was a group of masked men who murdered brother Joseph Smith. So we want to be able to see your face clearly enough even with your Halloween masks on. Totally pointless and ineffectual dogmatism. Except that whatever that is was never any kind of LDS dogma. There's a rule about masks in the church building. So costumes shouldn't have masks. But I just assumed it was a safety thing. We need to know who you are type thing. So maybe your mom added her own reasoning behind it without actually knowing what was up. My dad wrote a whole manual on his rules. Most unreasonable was you must tear the bread. You cannot use a knife to cut your bread. I was interested in learning about Wicca. Because I was young and in high school. Early 2000s. When Harry Potter was still happening and all that stuff. My mom and stepdad found out by reading an email I sent to my cousin. It was the summer and they freaked out. Took everything. I couldn't read. I couldn't listen to music. I couldn't watch TV or movies with the family. I couldn't hang out with friends. Couldn't talk to my cousin anymore. Basically anything that might bring me pleasure was taken. They made me do chores all day. Would go on family outings without me. Soon I became a shell of a person. I was going to kill myself. I wanted to I just was scared of death so I decided not to go through with it. So I turned myself off. They hated it. They weren't getting a rise out of me anymore. Anything they said to me, to extending my sentence I wouldn't react to. Since their narcissism relied on a victim, I wasn't a source anymore. So they extended my grounding even further. They could have told me to go pick up dog crap in the backyard with my teeth and I wouldn't have flinched. My stepdad's family, just as terrible, would come over and belittle me as well. I was told to smile. So I'd humor then and flash an empty smile for a second and return to my blank expression I had to find solace in. All this to save me from going to heck the only thing that saved me that summer was my visitation with my dad. My mom and stepdad tried to paint him in a bad light like HR was the abusive one. Even as a kid I knew my dad didn't make me feel as bad and empty as they did. I eventually got through it. Years later, about 4 years ago now. I ended up working at a job, unexpectedly, with a girl I used to play with in the neighborhood. I always wondered why she stopped showing up. When I wasn't home, or in another part of the house, she came to the door and asked to play. One of my parents opened the door and told her I didn't want to play with her anymore. I always wondered why she never hung out with me, or talked to me. Even finding this out in a more recent term, I cried and apologized to her. I could have had a great friendship with a lot of people but they just wanted to alienate and control me. Unfortunately this is just the tip of the iceberg. I don't talk to them anymore, but I still live in the same city as them and I have a lot of social anxiety because of that. One of my roommates exhibits some of the behavior my parents were so kind as to bestow on me. It's making things difficult to handle. I just want people to be happy and live in a healthy environment. It's so fricked up that the biggest monsters in the world are the people closest to you. One of my parents opened the door and told her I didn't want to play with her anymore. That's horrendous. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.